Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal and this is another Expedition Log. Today's episode was supposed to be the 2019 Christmas special, but due to work and tons of holiday concerts, it got postponed. Yep. And we're off to New Orleans. We're jumping on a plane and we'll be there in a few hours. And we're going to see some things and dead malls and turkey and everything else. So happy Thanksgiving. Since we're on a weekly X-Log schedule now, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's time to celebrate the 2018 holidays in New Orleans and a dead mall in Slidell. I hope you're all staying safe and that you're staying home if you can during this quarantine. The world will go back to normal soon enough, so fear not. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and to ring the bell to be notified of when I release new content. Also, be sure to join the Dead Malls of Discord server and follow me on all of my various social media. Thanks to all of my patrons and those who have clicked the blue button down below to join my channel as Elite Explorers. Thanks a bunch, guys. So I flew out to New Orleans for Thanksgiving in 2018, and right now we're walking through the old Louis Armstrong Airport, which is no longer in operation and sits abandoned. But during my stay, I had the opportunity to take a drive up to the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain in Slidell to film a wonderful mall, which unfortunately is now shuttered. However, the day before I toured the mall, I went out to Bourbon Street in the French Quarter of New Orleans with my dad, Captain Sal Sr. We had one hell of a lot of fun that night, and because I miss going on adventures during forced lockdown, let's live vicariously through my past expeditions. So before today's sponsor and before we tour the mall, we're going to take a stroll down Bourbon Street to get us all in the right spirits. And when I say spirits, I mean tons of spirits. And that we should all pour one for this episode. Cheers, guys. <laughs> What's the next round gonna be? I don't know, that way somewhere. That way. When's he coming to town? <laughs> <laughs> so since we can't visit malls right now, come take a walk with me through the now vacant and shuttered North Shore Square Mall. But first, please welcome back action superstar Richard Harrison in one of his best performances to date, with some of the most impressive martial arts and acting I have ever seen. For your consideration, the 1985 cinematic powerhouse, Ninja Terminator. Enjoy. Ninja Terminator. Witness a bloody struggle over the search for the unlimited force of the Golden Ninja Warrior. Oh. Bring me the body of that Golden Ninja Warrior. Ninja Terminator, an outstanding action-packed adventure between a triangle of the deadliest ninja warriors. I have to reform the ninja empire. Go to hell! You want the golden ninja warrior all for yourself. Look at this. Yes, that's my ninja star. <laughs> right? It's my ninja star. This is yours! Ninja Terminator, a spectacular story of betrayal and lust, the supreme power of ninja technique. What are we eating tonight, darling? It's your favorite dish. 
Steamed crabs? No, this time I'm preparing a really special dish, something called drunken crab, and I know you're gonna love it. What is that? Hang on in there, you'll find out. Traitor, listen to me. If you want to live, return the Golden Ninja Warrior to the Empire. Ninja Terminator, the weapon, the combat, and the intrigue into the heart-stopping world of the Ninja Empire. Ninja Terminator. Classical ninja fighters versus a world of guns, explosives, and even high technology. Welcome to the North Shore Square Mall in St. Tammany Parish, Slidell, Louisiana. Before we jump into the mall, just take a moment to bask in the amazing sounds of mercury vapor buzzing away in this completely tattered entrance. This sound is music to my ears. Sears Roebuck & Co. was founded in 1892, and by the 1950s and 60s, they began expanding into suburban markets. The Home Art Development Company was founded in 1959 and was created to build shopping malls for the company we now know to be Sears. Then on October 27, 1984, architectural firm Tiller Butner Rosa presented their plans for a new mall in St. Tammany Parish, Slidell, Louisiana, which they designed for Homart on behalf of Sears and intended to create a cool park-like setting similar to a romantic New Orleans courtyard. The 600,000 square foot North Shore Square Mall cost Homart a total of $34,150,000 and would be open one year later in October of 1985 with the dedication ceremony and ribbon cutting being led by the 1985 mayor of Slidell, Sam Caruso. Serving as the senior anchors to the mall, among over 80 in-line tenants, would be a Sears, D.H. Holmes, J.C. Penney, and a Mervyn's. I also found evidence in my research that secret areas were built into the walls in the Mervyn's for security personnel to monitor shoppers and for security to maneuver easily around various parts of the store to catch shoplifters. I'm not sure if they built this into the other anchors, but if any of you worked at these places as security, chime in down in the comments. The North Shore Square Mall would have no direct competition at its grand opening, and it would serve the St. Tammany Parish and North Shore of Lake Pontchartrain exclusively for years. This is the old J.C. Penney concourse, and if you look very carefully at that awesome mirrored finish awning, you can still make out the label scar of the J.C. Penney. In 1989, D.H. Holmes was acquired by the Dillard's department store chain, and the Holmes was converted into a Dillard's. There was also an out parcel six-screen Carmike Cinemas, and there were quite a few historic releases in the 1989 cinema. We had the original Batman with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson as the Joker, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which was the last Indiana Jones movie to be produced, and they should just keep it that way and let the poor old man retire. We had Ghostbusters 2, Lethal Weapon 2, Back to the Future Part 2, 
Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, The Little Mermaid, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Uncle Buck, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Die Hard, and The Wizard, which is a criminally underrated movie starring a young Christian Slater and Fred Savage, showcasing the Nintendo Entertainment System in the Power Glove. It's so bad, man. This was a time where you could call a hotline to get an actual person on the other end to give you guided instruction from a printed binder on how to exploit and complete games like Metroid, Contra, Ninja Gaiden, Super Mario Bros. 2, The Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think Super Mario Bros. 3 was even introduced as a brand new game in this movie, in the epic conclusion where the three players battle to reach the end. I've spent countless days playing these games, and as it turns out, I suck at all of them. No console is more challenging or rewarding as the NES, and its massive tranche of kick-ass games. Maybe I'll start up a stream on Twitch playing through all the old games. Let me know if I should in the comments. The mall has this overall aroma of chlorine. And I've said this before in other X-Logs, where it always takes me back when I smell the stale chlorine and grease, but this mall especially had an overwhelming smell of chlorine throughout the interior. But on the exterior of the mall, it stunk like swamp. And if you stick around to the end, you'll get a glimpse of the swampland that's right in front of the mall. Maybe it's swamp or marsh or who knows what, but it looks pretty gross. And I wonder if nutria reside in this little swampy area. And if you don't know what a nutria is, just think Baltimore-sized rat combined with a beaver. And if my recollection serves me correctly, throughout the year, in various parts of Louisiana, the state will pay you to hunt nutria because the population is so overwhelming. And as it goes, I think if you bring them a tail, they'll give you money. If I'm wrong about that, just let me know in the comments. But I do remember that being a fact. On August 3rd, 1990, Maison Blanche held their grand opening and dedication as the fifth senior anchor for the North Shore Square Mall, covering 115,000 square feet. The day was littered with excitement, offering shoppers door prizes, refreshments, fashion shows, and celebrities. I suppose at the time, All My Children was a big deal on the ABC network, so they had Walt Willie make an appearance, who played Jackson Montgomery on the series. That must have been exciting, and I'm sure they got lots of people to come in for that. Home Art Development put the mall up for sale in 1994, and in very short order, the North Shore Square Mall was sold at a steep discount for nearly $20 million to a limited partnership based out of Kenner, Louisiana, called Seisler North Shore Limited. This struck me as odd. It's pretty strange to see a mall that is seemingly doing so well to be sold for nearly half its original price less than 10 years later. Although, now that I think about it, the mall at the source up on Long Island in New York built in 1997 for over $200 million, was put on the auction block in 2012 and couldn't even fetch 25 million bucks. It was sold for $92 million just a couple years later, so maybe the idea of a mall being sold for less than half of its value within a decade isn't so far-fetched. Make sure you go watch that video. That was Xlog 56 by the way, so it's fresh in my mind. While the 1994 deal still caught my attention when I was doing my research, I wasn't surprised. Sears Roebuck & Co's Home Art Development was one of the biggest mall developers at the time, with over $1.5 billion in their mall portfolio and nearly 75 million square feet of gross leasable area across their malls. And they took extreme pride in each of their properties. So to learn that they sold off some non-core properties in 1994 really came with no shock. And I do think there's reasoning behind this short sell-off. In 1995, Home Art was bought out by General Growth Properties for $1.85 billion. General Growth had only been trading publicly for two years at this point when they went public in 1993. And over time, they would acquire many illustrious portfolios, most notably the purchase of famed mall developer Jim Rouse's entire mall lineup of 37 malls, four strip malls, and six other mixed-use projects for $12.6 billion in August of 2004. 
and while General Growth, or GGP, never had any part of the North Shore Square Mall, I do think that their predecessor Homart selling off the mall as a prophetic act of the impending 1995 merger was one of the major contributing factors that ultimately led to the quaint Slidell property eventually succumbing to neglect. Just over 101 years after the Maison Blanche chain was first created in 1897, it was bought out by Dillard's in 1998. The North Shore Square Mall location was converted, and the mall then had two Dillard's anchor tenants. This became a trend in other malls in the area as I've seen on my expeditions. It was probably a smart move for Dillard's to open a second anchor space during these mergers. As we all know, empty anchor tenants tend to lead mall owners down an inevitable path towards closure. Not all malls are dealt the same fate, but those in overmalled areas competing with more opulent shopping centers tend to fall quickly when lacking senior anchors. The North Shore Square Mall would weather the Y2K storm just like many of its counterparts, and by 2004, the mall's appraisal was at a fairly healthy $43.6 million. The value may not have held constant through the years, nor has it garnered much appreciation, but the value was at least steady as it crossed into the 21st century. I'd like to take a moment just to thank all of you for your patience while I work through my backlog, and it is strange to see a Christmas display now that we're in May of 2020, but it doesn't make it any less sad seeing a Christmas display in a dead mall with nobody sitting on Santa's lap. Catastrophe would strike the southeast corridor of the United States when Hurricane Katrina touched ground on August 29, 2005 over southeast Louisiana and Mississippi and caused over $130 billion of damage and nearly 2,000 fatalities. The greater New Orleans area was devastated due to the catastrophic engineering flaws in the surrounding levees, which held the water in, causing over 80% of the city to be flooded when the levees broke, leaving tens of thousands of people stranded for weeks. The hurricane affected dozens of the 67 Louisiana parishes. However, north of Lake Pontchartrain in St. Tammany Parish in Slidell, where the North Shore Square Mall is located, the damage was minimal. The mall sustained virtually no damage, but the retail market looked down upon locations in the greater New Orleans area along with the surrounding parishes, and caused a bit of a stigma in the real estate markets in this area after the events of Hurricane Katrina. Nobody wanted to build there because they were all afraid that the levees would break again. As I was walking down the courtyard leading to the old Mervins, where we are right now, on the left you'll see a nail salon with the searing red neon. And as I walked past, all of the little old ladies that were getting their nails done in there gave me the most deranged stink eye, so I had to tiptoe through there. The unsettling looks that these women were giving me were much more frightening than if a mall cop were to be following me. Even more unsettling than when those guys were following me around in the Greens Point Mall. Just one year following the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, Sizler Properties had enough, and they wanted out of the market. So they decided to divest entirely, and Canadian-based Morgard purchased the entire catalog of Sizler Properties in 2006 for $324 million. It was also during 2006 that the Mervins closed their location at the North Shore Square Mall. Mervyn's was owned by the Dayton Hudson Corporation from 1974 until 2004, when it became the Target Corporation, by way of an acquisition in 1990 of the Marshall Fields chain, and in 2006, when the May Company, who owned Macy's, decided not to rebrand the masthead on the North Shore Square Mall Mervyn's, but to shutter the location instead. One year after the Mervyn's shuttered in 2007, a Burlington Coat Factory opened in its place. Despite the turmoil North Shore Square had been through after the turn of the millennium, the death blow would come by 2014, when the Fremo Town Center opened on the south end of Slidell, bringing in a massive $528,000 of sales tax to the state, contrasting the $90,000 that North Shore Square Mall would bring for that year. As if the new competition wasn't a big enough nail in the coffin, Dillard's decided to move their main store out of the North Shore Square Mall and into the Fremo Town Center. Right now, we're in the old Dillard's Concourse, and back when the Maison Blanche was bought out, this was a Dillard's woman's department store, with the second location at the other end of the mall for men and children. According to the tax records for this mall, it's seen multiple renovations, but I haven't found any concrete sources in my research to show exactly what was done during these renovations. 
And given that there have been so many remodeling events over the years, I wonder if the subtle pastel coloring with the soft salmon tones are a nod to when the Dillard's Woman's Store was here. Was this what the storefront looked like back in the day? Certainly the Maison Blanche looked a bit different than this, but I don't know. If you know, and if you're local to this area, please let me know down in the comments what this place used to look like. Just a few years later, in 2017, the Sears would shutter, followed by the JCPenney and then the Burlington Coat Factory, leaving the mall with an at-home, which replaced the Sears and a segregated Dillard's and Dillard's clearance stores as the only anchors with an overall occupancy of less than 10%. By late 2018, I showed up, and this was how the mall presented for its last holiday season before shuttering. Morgard tried like hell to bring Christmas to the mall, but despite their efforts, North Shore Square Mall would shutter in the summer of 2019. If any of you from this area could help me out a bit and let me know what this little storefront was. The entrance to the resource suite? I don't know what this was. I love finding quirky little storefronts like this that seemingly show no retail presence. Like the Tiffin Mall had that funky little storefront and you guys let me know that it was a real estate office. I love finding places like that. So if you guys can help me out in the comments, let me know what that little place on the corner was near the Dillard's. Morgard announced a $36 million project to transform the interior mall space to an open-air experience, and would sign the Cons Home Plus department store to fill the vacant Mervyn's turned Burlington Coat Factory space in fall of 2019. As of now, in 2020, from what I've seen in my research, redevelopment has begun on the mall, and the conversion to an outdoor shopping center has commenced. And I truly hope this brings more commerce and jobs to the area. And if you're from this region, please do comment down below if you know what's going on locally with this place, because it's a fantastic space that deserves tons of commerce. It's always a struggle to film these properties, as I know how badly they're hurting and how the local landscape has been negatively affected by the demise of the property. But in the same breath, it's hard for me not to film these places to keep their memory alive. Hell, it's impossible for me to film anything right now because I'm locked up inside my house while forcibly self-quarantining to do my part in keeping the COVID-19 son of a bitch from spreading. And I'll keep doing the same and producing fully curated content weekly until we can all get out again. Thank you all so much for watching this video and a serious thank you to all of my patrons and those who clicked that blue button down below to join my channel as Elite Explorers. Those of you now have access to exclusive emoji and icons during my live streams and premieres and also early access to the Expedition Log series. There's that swampy area that I mentioned earlier in the video. Do you think there's any nutria down there? Also, thanks to the Dead Malls of Discord seal and family who are keeping me sane during the pandemic. Please make sure to subscribe and follow to everyone on the seal and to ignore those who have fallen off the seal as we've discarded the weirdos so you don't have to deal with them. Links to all of the Demod seal channels along with my social media accounts are down below. Thanks again for watching everybody. And I'll see you all next week for Xlog 58. So stay home if you can, stay safe, take care, and have a fantastic day.